Isaiah 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelled in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide their spoil. For you have broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel for fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. In Micah 5, verse 2, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting.
26 through 35. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. His name shall be called Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Luke chapter 2. Verses 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This first census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was a house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary as betrothed wife who was with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. As we review the announcements from the Old Testament prophets, he taps God does, taps us on the shoulders and said, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. And then he gets closer and closer to the people that will actually participate. He taps Mary on the shoulder and says, this is what's going to happen. Joseph, poor Joseph, going through all of this turmoil, thinking, I just need to divorce her. I just need to put her away. I just need to call the marriage off. And God taps Joseph on the shoulder and says, don't even think about it. This is of God. This is of the Holy Spirit. As I thought about how salvation works, 
for each and every one of us. God taps us on the shoulder and the message becomes known. We lived in darkness and light arrives. We lived in some level of sin and the light arrives. And none of us have the joy of, of, of salvation together. It was, he tapped us on the shoulder. He tapped us on the shoulder. He tapped us on the shoulder and brought salvation to each and every one of us. And we're going to symbolize this tonight by lighting candles. We're going to lower the lights and we're going to be in darkness. And as it were, we will uh, begin to be tapped on the shoulder. I will light a candle here. I will pass it to someone else. They will pass it to you. And the darkness that we will be sitting under will soon be lit by the light of Christ. And so let's just take a moment and think about where we've been, where we've come from, and where we are with Christ.
light held high is the command of scripture that we don't hide it under a bushel that we are a light that he came and tapped each of us on the shoulder Luke chapter 2 verse 8 and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flocks at night and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told of them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told on them. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that they might receive the adoption of sons. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away behold all things are become new and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given unto us the ministry of the reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, 
be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The fullness prophecy to fulfillment to now the message. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we celebrate. I know a lot of people want to get wrapped up in what the world celebrates. I know a lot of people actually want to celebrate baby Jesus in a manger. But really, that's not what it's all about. He came to be our Savior. He came to save us from ourselves and from our sin. May that be the, the message that rings home in every one of our hearts. And as we celebrate tomorrow with family and friends and whatever your traditions are, I just hope that it shines forth from you in some way, shape, or form, that people will see you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Traditionally, we would have church tomorrow since it's a Sunday, but we're not. Uh, I just want you to be with your family. I want you to be the message to someone tomorrow. So in light of that, we're going to take our offering tonight. This will be our Christmas offering and actually the last one uh, for the year. So uh, if you would help us out, ushers are coming. And if you could bring the house lights up. Um, if you're not prepared to give this way, you can give online. Uh, we have the uh, ability at cagfm.org. And you can find the giving tab there and you can give online. But let's bow our heads in prayer, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the tremendous gift of your Son. Now, may we in return give from the depths of our heart back to the work that you established, the work of your church, to preach this gospel to the ends of the earth. And I pray, Father, that we would be good stewards of all that you put into our hands, that we would make sure your gospel message goes forth. We pray your blessing upon each person here every family represented, and that your miracle hand of touch, your blessing would be upon each one of us. We ask this established in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Joy to the world. Just